Section 11.5, square roots of variable ex expressions. We were introduced in 11.3, were rational radicals, and that was square root of 36, which we turned into the square root of 6 squared because we wanted the radical and the exponent, the square, to cancel, and that left us with that. Then we were introduced to irrational radicals, and that was something like the square root of 20, where we looked for rational radicals in irrational. So we broke that into rad 4, rad 5. We found that perfect square or that rational radical in it and it became 2 rad 5. Today we are going to find uh, radicals with variables. So we looked for perfect squares so when we get the square root of x squared we love that because the radical square root will cancel with the square and it will leave us with x. So the square root of x squared is x. So we like those bases that are being squared. That is going to be our overall objective. Can we find perfect squares in it? So when we get the square root of x to the fourth, I'm going to break that into x squared times x squared. Because remember, that's what that would be. And then we can separate each one. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of x squared is x. x times x is x squared. So the square root of x to the fourth equals x to the second. We always want to pair it up with an x squared because if we can get an x squared, then it'll come out of the house. So I like showing this progression. And then we get a little crazy after 10. And we can say, what's x to the 22nd? What is the square root of x to the 100? 100. Let's just do that. So we see that x, the square root of x squared is x. The square root of x to the 4th is x squared root of x to the sixth. How many x squares are in x to the sixth? x squared, x squared, x squared. There's three of them. So that's going to be x to the third. So we're really dividing two into our exponent. How many twos are in six? There's three. How many twos are in x to the eighth? Well, that's going to be x to the fourth. How many are in x to the 10th? That's x to the 5th. So the trick with even exponents are that you divide it by 2. So that's x to the 11th. This is going to be x to the 50th. Notice the radical goes away. A lot of students forget when they pronounce it. The square root of x to the second is x. The radical goes away because it cancels with the square. So very important. The other way that we could look at this, which is a little bit more advanced, we remember there's a 2 in there, and we can write that as x to the 6 over 2. Remember how we can write the, the radical as a power. The numerator is the power, and the denominator is the root. So if I saw this, x to the 6 over 2, that's 6 over 2 can be simplified to 3. And we already knew that. x squared, the square root of x to the 6 is x to the 3rd. So that's an alternative way, an alternate way of looking at that. Um, what if we had the square root of a squared b squared? What would we do with that? Well, we would separate them again. Square root of a squared is a. Square root of b squared is b. So my answer is going to be a b. What if I had a coefficient out front? What if I had x to the third 
x to the fourth. Well, x to the third comes down. And then, what is the square root of x to the fourth? That's x to the second. So this, now, when we have like bases and we're multiplying, that becomes x to the fifth. So that answer would be x to the fifth. So when they have coefficients, you just put it out there once you simplify. Really, really good. Um, what if I have, what if I have this? What if I have the square root of 36m to the second? So we would separate it into constants and variables. You're not going to divide this by 2. Don't make the mistake of dividing the constant by 2. We only divide by 2 when we're dealing with exponents. This is not an exponent. That's a base. So we look at it as it's a rational. What is the square root of 36? 6. What's the square root of m squared? m. So when we get radicals with constants, we're going to separate them from the variables and treat them in a different manner. What if I have the square root of 18 um, a to the fourth, b to the tenth? Woo. So I'm going to separate rad 18. I'm going to separate a to the fourth. I'm going to separate b to the tenth. Rad 18, I'm going to break into rad 9, rad 2 which becomes 3 rad 2. a to the fourth, square root of a to the fourth is a to the second. Sorry, let's do that, times a to the second. What is the square root of b to the tenth would be b to the fifth. So now I need to put my answer, the things that are on the outside. 3 is on the outside, a squared is on the outside, b to the fifth is on the outside. What's on the inside? Rad 2. So I'm going to put all the things on the outside. 3a squared b to the fifth, rad 2. Woo, baby. That's a good one. All right. So we just dealt with all of these variables that had an even exponent. What happens if we have a radical, a variable, that was to the third? Well, if we have the square root of x to the third, well, remember, what's our objective is to look for x squares. Excuse me. Excuse me. So, can I rewrite this with an x squared? Yeah, I can write x to the third is x squared times x. That produces x cubed. So now, I'm going to separate them into their own houses. And I can simplify x squared. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of x cannot be simplified, so I have x rad x. What, I, what if I have x to the fifth? What would that equal? Well, there's two ways I can look at it. I can break them into x squares, and that's okay. I get an x squared, I get an x squared, I get a rad x left over. So that's going to be x times x times rad x, or x squared rad x. So I, again, I'm looking to find how many x squares, how many 2's are in 5. So 2 divided by 5 is 2 with 1 left over, is 2 with 1 left over. Ho -ho. So that is a shortcut when we get bigger variables. Let's not use purple. So if I have the square root of x to the 23rd, instead of going x squared times x squared until you get 23 of them, well, we're really looking to see how many twos are in 23. So 23, two goes into 23 11 times with one left over. So x to the 11th comes outside of the house because there are 11 twos for each two, you get one, and then we have one left over. So x, the square root of x to the 23rd is x to the 11th rad x. So that's a nice little shortcut that you can utilize. So now let's get really crazy. 
What if I have a to the fifth, b to the fourth, c to the seventh? Ooh, let's break each one up. So, a to the fifth. Remember this, dividing by two is only with exponents. You're not gonna divide the constants by two. We're only using this shortcut technique with exponents. So two goes into five two times with one left over. Two goes into four two times, so that's b squared. Notice it's not a coefficient, it's an exponent. And then two goes into seven three times with one left over. So we again look and see what is on the outside. What do we have on the outside? We have an a squared, we have a b squared, and a c cubed. What do we have left over in the rads? Rad a and rad c. So let's check it out. So you write all the outsides on the outside and then the insides on inside the radical. So your answer simplified would be a squared, b squared, c cubed, rad, a, c. Ooh, that's a good advanced one. So here is the ultimate question. 75, a to the third, b to the sixth. So we would separate the constant, separate each variable. Rad 75. So does 4 go into 75? No. 9? No. 16? No. 25? Yes. Remember, I'm looking for perfect square factors into that. So rad 75 becomes rad 25 rad 3, and that is 5 rad 3. Rad a cubed, 2 goes into 3 once, so an a to the first comes out with 1a left over. Square root of b to the 6, 2 goes into 6 3 times, so we get a b cubed times a rad a times b cubed. Let's look and see what's on the outside. We have a 5 outside, an a outside, and a b cubed outside. We have a rad 3 and a rad a on the inside. Let's write the things in alphabetical order. And then we would write 3a. 5a b cubed times 3 rad a. Oh, rad 3a. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty sure that that is all we got. Yeah, we're not going to cover that part. All right. Come and see me if you have a question.